Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Turf Hour Script. Let's get right into today's very important video. We are going to cover Ledger. And David Schwartz, folks, has spoken out and he does not like what's going on. Stick to the very end. You do not want to miss this. We are going to go over a video. I'm sure you guys have seen it, but let's. you got to listen to it again. This is crazy. This is by Pascal, chairman and CEO at Ledger. This is what it's looking like. He's currently present there. Uh, but he's been there for eight years and three months. And in this video, um, I just want to highlight one thing before I play it. He talks about it's not true that the average person gets a peanut every day because he admitted in this video that while the new recover update could technically see user seed phrases provided to government entities it would only be reversed for serious acts such as crimes involving drugs and terrorism. And I could tell you this from the bottom of my heart, that is completely BS. Governments could work around the system, create some sort of lie and still have access to this regardless if you're involved in uh, drugs or terrorism. Take a listen to this video, this is pretty bad. Don't be worried though. We're gonna go over what David Schwartz says. Don't panic. Don't go running to your ledger, but take a listen to what Pascal says here. 99% of the cases, you know, there is no collusion that is really possible between the, the, the three entities and, you know, the, the way that this is built, but we've released a lot of content. The way that this is built, like, you know, you can only, uh, you only the user can sort of call back the, the, the three shards. The only concern really is If, uh, you know, this user specifically, you know, if we get subpoena by yes. uh, a government to say now, you know, this user specifically, you know, you know, this user specifically, you know, we would like you to, you know, retrieve the three shards, etc. So that's not a real concern in the end because for several reasons. Um, one, you only get subpoena like this by governments if it's a serious act, like, you know, terrorism, drugs, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's not true that the average person gets subpoenaed every day. Can I just interrupt there? Uh, Coinbase had all their customer data subpoenaed by the yes. I, uh, IRS. John Doe. Yeah. Uh, and so so they had to su supply every customer, was it over $10,000 or 20000 20000 yeah. $20,000. Over a three-month rolling period. And they gave all the And Coinbase data. fought back because they wanted a few three dollars But Coinbase is a bank. This is not a banking service. Okay, so it's very different. But but it's, what I'm saying is the IRS wanted that information. If if something there is no like, information for the IRS on this. Well, they, you do have ex pubs, but you had them before too on Ledger Live, right? I mean, there is no real information for the IRS on this, etc. And by the way, like you know, again, this is there will be trade-offs in the future. Yeah. Uh, so like we're not saying that uh, you know if you're uncomfortable with this, you can keep your 24 words and you know. Keep doing what you're doing today. This doesn't change anything, okay? Doesn't change anything, doesn't create a backdoor. We can come back on open source, no open source, yeah. but in the end, like we are a good actor, like we don't create backdoors in our user's of device. Course. And by the way, if we did, the business goes sales. And we got a man itching his head. He didn't itch it for that long, but you know, I kind of edited it. But did you hear the part where he said at the end, they will be trade-offs in the future. What does he mean by trade-offs in the future? Trade-offs within governments, trade-offs between legal entities providing, you know, the bad and the good? There is no real information for the IRS on this, et cetera. And by the way, like, you know, again, this is, there will be trade-offs in the future. Yeah. Uh, so, like but look what Crypto Erie pointed out as well. This is, this is the first thing that kind of triggered me in terms of a little bit of a red flag. Why is every single finger got a Thor ring on it? That must be very uncomfortable, but it doesn't look pretty from a CEO from Ledger. Imagine Brad Garlinghouse walking around, his hands, probably those are probably 10,000 each, it could be way more than 10,000 each, walking around with $100,000 just on his fingers. But besides that, I don't know what he's into, David Schwartz mentioned the video and that he had a couple things to say but of course people will say this part and i'm you guys have all some of you guys said this already ledger recover is an optional service we all can use ledger without using recover and i've said this in the past 
it doesn't matter if you opt in or not, there is still that breach. If you guys watch my previous videos, you guys know, but it's great that David Schwartz is here and he's talking about it. The problem is that the product has gone from the hardware and firmware ensures nobody can exfiltrate seeds or keys to be careful not to get tricked into exfiltrating seeds or keys. That's a massive reduction in security and radical change in the risk model. And we have another individual asking him with regards to not accepting the service, is it in theory now possible that back actors, uh, employees, government agencies could sign one up for the service and so put a user holding at risk? And David Schwartz says they would at least have to have access to the ledger and either have the pin or the ledger would have to be un unlocked. So we're safe, okay? I don't want you guys running anywhere. I'm looking into alternatives. I'll give you guys a quick update. I told you guys I was looking into something um, and it's gonna cost me about $24,000 to get this going. Uh, but again, when I spoke to this entity, I personally saw a little bit of red flags as well. Uh, but if you guys wanna come together as a community, and I personally believe the XRP community is one of the most trusted and most intelligent communities out there. So if you guys are interested in coming together and creating something, let me know in the comments down below. We could do a uh, fundraising. Again, it's not gonna happen right away. This, there's gonna, this takes a lot of money to do, but we just can't turn to anybody. We, I don't know who to trust, and we need something that we could all trust and use going into this multi-year bull market. And we're gonna finish off with a David Schwartz tweet. I have a suggestion for a ledger that might end this debacle. Apologize for the poorly thought out announcement. Fact, don't sign or release the firmware as planned because it hasn't really, it hasn't been uh, out yet. Number three, instead create two firmware systems one with recovery and one without. Ship the firmware without recovery. Like, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. This is beautiful. Number four, permit changing streams, but wipe all key material in the stream change. Number five, publicly and clearly commit to never introduce a feature to existing products in their default firmware, streams that permit keys material to leave the device at any time other than when it's generated. Number six, publicly and clearly commit to always requiring keys be wiped when switching streams. And number seven, ensure the prompting around the recover features force the user to fully acknowledge their understanding that this feature can make their keys available to governments and civil litigants who sue them. Ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But we could all calm down, okay? We have David Schwartz. In my opinion, I look at him like a genius. He is a genius. Um, and just don't opt in and just know that nobody could retrieve anything without the pin or the ledger, okay? You gotta have one or the other. So keep that safe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, again, looking for hardware wallets. Um, Again, I there's no trust. This crypto sector right now has no trust. I'm personally even thinking about just better off leaving stuff on exchanges. But again, we don't know yet. I'll keep you guys posted. We'll be back with another episode. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.